I am a very ready super reader. Hi guys, it's me Adam. Welcome to a Laughing Moment. Welcome to Adam Reads. Welcome to a new installment of Adam Reads. I'm bringing you back chapter two of the Hardy Boys, the Hooded, the Hooded Hawk Mystery by Franklin W. Dixon. So my videos don't get taken down because of fragment use or copyright fragment or something like that. Uh, here my pappy coughing, you know, I told you guys a thing before that my pap has coughing spells, and so you will hear my pap coughing. Chapter 2. I don't even know how to say it. It's just right here. It's chapter 2. By the time Joe had reached the foot of the Hardy driveway, the thief w was half a, a block down Elm Street. The man forced a bird into a cloth sack as he ran, then seeing... Joe, in pursuit, he leaped a hedge and sprinted up a driveway between two houses. As Joe reached, a woman leaned out the side of the window, giving a startled shriek. The masked man, ev evidently frightened, looked back to check Joe's progress. The side of his neck struck, struck a clothesline, throwing him off balance, and Joe closed some of the gap between them. Drop that bird, you thief, he shouted furiously. The man sh staggered a few paces, then regained his balance. He jumped the low fence to re to adjoining uh, and sped down its driveway back to the street. Wait, adjoining uh, property and speed down its driveway back to the street, still holding the bag falcon. Joe's sh shout and the woman's scream had attracted the attention of the policeman on Elm Street as the thief reached the sidewalk. He slammed him to the portly figure of po patrolman, snuff, snuff, smuff, and dropped the sack. Grab him, Joe yelled to the officer, but the masked man recovering himself quickly sidestepped smuff, forgetting the bird. He cut across the street and disappeared into the dense, flower-covered village behind a house. Just then, Frank swung the convertible alongside the curb. Joe picked up the sack and thrust it in being and be beside his brother. Patrolman Smuff had taken up the chase, and now Joe joined them. They searched the area thoroughly for two square blocks. They were unable to find the fugitive or anyone who had seen him. As they retraced their steps to the convertible, Smuff asked, What's this all about anyway? That fellow tried to steal our bird. Not what kind of bird? It is a parrot. No, Joe replied, a pale green falcon, a hawk. What are those hunting birds? I don't know. They had they had them around this part of the country. This one was sent to us. It's valuable. The patrolman nodded. Valuable? Eh? Eh? Do you notice anything special about that thief? Well, Joe replied his face was masked. But this might help. When he grabbed the falcon, I got a good look at his hands. They were deeply tanned, so I guess he spent a lot of time outdoors. And he was wearing a carved ring with a ruby in it. The chairman Smuff joined down the information when they reached. Oh my God! I can't get a bellyache, and I. Sorry, guys. I'm just having a bellyache, and my belly hurts, and I'm kind of lightheaded while reading. And that's because, well, I worry too much, and I'm gonna. Th I'm not gonna throw up. Trust me. This might help. When he grabbed the falcon, I got a good look at his hands. They were deeply tanned, so I guess he spends a lot of time outdoors. And he was wearing a carved ring with a ruby in it. Petromia sm Smuff, Smuff join jointed down this information when they reached the convertible. He said goodbye to the boy and hurried off. As Joe climbed to the car, Frank got gently lifted the falcon from the sack, apparently because the hood had prevented the bird from seeing. She had not become frightened by the experience, since Miss Peregrine seems to feel okay. Frank said, let's go on the, on the cheat, a chance as we planned. With the falcon perched on Joe's wrist, the boys rode out of town. A short time later, they arrived at the Martin farm. They saw cheat near a corner of the barn, making re repairs on a drawer. They shot boy with was alternately munching on an apple and hammering. Wow, Joe grinned. Cheat's working. Although the Hardys needled their easy going pal a great deal, they were close friends. Cheat had been helping them ever since Chad I think it's let me say Cheat had been helping them ever since the day, the first day of the mystery. The tower's treasure. 
Just recently, the boy's latest case, the yellow fever, the yellow feather mystery, his skill with machinery, and the operation of his motor set, motor set has been in, instrumental in rescuing the hardy hardies from death and a sailed up ice fort. A sheet hurried over to see his friends. Cheerfully, hi, fellows. Do you did you bring the hawk? The hardy slid out out the door, and the falcon was transferred to Frank's wrist. Pretty neat, she remarked. Let's see how her without her hat. Her reached out to remove it. Wait a minute, said Frank. She's been through a rugged experience this afternoon, and he told she what happened. Cheat's eyebrow lifted. Sounds like the beginning of an of a beginning of another mystery for you fellows. Sure does, said Joe. Cheat looked at the hawk. She seems really t tame, he commented. She is, Joe replied. As Frank removed the hood from the falcon, Cheat studied the note beak and the long-tempered wings, which Frank said were characteristic of the falcons. She streamlined all right, he declared. Yes, and she's a powerful flyer. Joe added, according to one of the dad's books, she's very courageous, but gentle, too. Notice her dark eyes and the way she holds her head up. The agent falconers call the peregrines noble and gentle birds. These breed, this breed was deprived of a medieval king. A medieval kings. Cheat was visibly impressed. How about a trail flight? As the moment her sister Lula appeared on the back porch of the farmhouse and called, "Hi, boys! What would you like? Would you like some lemonade?" Frank waved and said that he would have some later, but Joe immediately hurried toward the house. The slender pretty girl with dark hair and eyes what was his date on many occasions, as well as a ca capable southern assistant. Meanwhile, as they walked toward an open field, she'd ask Frank to let him fly the falcon. Better let make it try it first, said Frank. I'm not how sure successful I'll be since I... All I know about falconry is what I read in the book. He stopped, unfastened each chest from the silver, the silver, and then, with a somewhat awkward movement of the glove, he threw the hawk into the air with long, powerful wing beats. The falcon circled, rising higher and higher until she was virtually a dot above in the sky. Now what? She asked. See this? Said Frank, holding on the feathered lure. What on earth is that? According to the book, the falconer waved this lure in the air, and the falcon immediately dropped earthward and strikes it. You mean she'll come back to that thing? She asked incredulously. Frank nodded, watching the hawk intently. Shh, shh, see how she kept circling us? He exclaimed. That's called waiting on. She'll, rem she'll maintain her pitch there until I call her back, either by waving the lure or, friendly or flushing a bird. Frank swore in the uh, lure several times, excuse me, then let it drop to the ground. Immediately, the falcon turned and plummeted toward them at a terrific speed. Stop stooping, yellow, yelled Frank. Listen to the wind whistle through her feathers. The falcon came within a foot of striking the lure that swung upward and a mountain almost to her previous height in the sky. That was sentinel. Breathed Chit, the falcon made a wide circle and then headed with a deep, powerful wing beat. Hey, she's flying again. She cried out, no, said Frank. Look, she's after something. It's a pigeon. She gripped his friend's arm. I'll call the falcon to the lord, Frank said tersely. Okay, I need a break. <sighs> belly, belly, go away, go away. But it was it's not that bad. It's just very annoying when you're reading. But it was already too late. With an unbelievable speed, the falcon closed the distance and then streaked earthward, striking the pigeon in midair. The boys saw a tuft of feathers fly and heard the sharp report of the impact. The pigeon dropped to the ground and the falcon, after mounting from her stoop, dropped down again to exclaim her prize. To claim her prize. Falcon and Cheat were toward the two birds, hoping to rescue the pigeon slowly in order not to frighten the hawk. Frank reached for the chests with the wings and tail spread. The bird looked defiantly at him, but made no attempt to fly off. The boy secured the chests and put on the leash. Too bad, said Frank, but the pigeon's dead. He stroked the hawk and then slowly lifted both the pigeon and falcon as he did. He saw a, a small red capsule on one of the pigeon's legs. Gosh, it's a curio pigeon, exclaimed Cheat. Frank it concerned that the falcon had killed some prized bird as Cheat to twist the cap 
off this small container. Cheat did so and shook it gingerly over the palm of his hand to the boys. Amazement instead of a message out followed two glittering red stones. That's strange, Frank remarked. Joe, who had been watching the Falcons' performance, joined her brother and Cheat. The, tri the trial bent over the stones. In Cheat's hands, Frank asked Joe to check the pigeon's other leg for an identification band. Nothing here, he reported. Frank rubbed his fingers over the stones and recognized an old leaf filled to them. I believe these are the rubies, valuable rubies. All right, that's it for chapter two. The man, I am, whoo, I am on ball today, bringing you guys a 10 minute video at freaking eight o'clock. Who would ever, oh my gosh. How long is, wait, there has to be some, oh wait, 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 no way, I'm not reading that. That's like another 10 pages, which will be another 10 minutes. So I'm gonna end it today. I might do one more book today, maybe Guest or Darkness, or Part 1 of Guest, or Part 1 of Darkness, or not videos at all, but this one. I don't know, I am going to be starting one more series, and I'm going to cancel some series. I'm going to cancel Guest until, well, <coughs> excuse me, I'm not going to continue Hatchet until later on this year, but I am going to be doing Stepping on the Cracks by Mary Downing Hawn. In fact, I will be doing that. And a little bit next met tomorrow so you guys can wait until then then I think tonight I might do guest one chapter of guest I'm hoping I can get through that I might not I don't know but I will see you guys on the next video that is guaranteed because I'm the only one I don't have a twin or brothers or sisters I'm an only child so you won't hear interruptions in the video unless it's my Mimi, Pappy, or my mom. So, if you guys know from my other YouTube channels, you guys know that I am an only child. So, thank you for listening to today's video. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you all next one. Thank you for tuning in to Laughing Moment. It's been a moment. Laughing!